So with that, I introduce to you Rose Clancy and Max Cohen for a little foot stomp in music. Thanks.
leave the girls alone They put my hair and stole my comb That's alright till I get home Oh, she's handsome, she's pretty She's the bell, the bell, fascinating She's a card in a one, two, three Please, won't you tell me who is she? celebrating this this time when we all get to be together again. Um, I have a, a little piece here. It's called The Old Resting Chair, um, and it was written by a fellow from the Shetland Islands. His name is Tom Anderson. And, uh, you know, it's um, been a tough couple of years, I guess, for, for many people, and some of us have, have lost people, and, and, uh, and some of us just need a rest. And, uh, you know, I, I think of this tune as the resting place and a place where we can just kind of relax and breathe. And uh, it's called the old resting chair, or as they say in, in the Shetlands, the owl resting chair. So I want you all to just relax and take a deep breath.
song it's actually Scottish uh, and I originally learned this with all the original Scottish brogue um, because Scots really I know it's English but it, it really feels like another language when I hear it uh, and I learned it from a Scots a Scotsman named um, Alan Carr uh, who sang a really beautiful version and I originally like ripped off all of his his Scottish stuff and then I was like man I, I Felt a little wrong kind of doing that. <laughs> so this is a more um, Americanized version of it. But I did retain the, uh, the song's called Once Upon a Time, but in Scottish that's Eens Upon a Time. So I, do, I did keep Eens Upon a Time, and if I accidentally like lapse into some brogue, I, I apologize that you can't oh, please understand don't. it. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> it might happen accidentally, because I learned it that way first. We'll see what, it was just called Eens Upon a Time. out, right? I think that's going to work. So here we're going to try it again here. Eats upon a time when I was young and bonny. Eats I had a bonny lad, but now I haven't any. When I was cook about the house and he was but a laddie. I gave him all my bread and ale to be my baronies that he My mistress oft times says to me that I know she's right I must stay safe in the house with the coming of the night's so But Johnny took me for his aim and I was well contented Though those nights are long since gone Often I have repented. Now Johnny, he is long since gone and thinks of me no more I'm left alone to raise our child despite the oath he swore Ah, but don't you think my bottom lad that I'm mad about you for I can do with a man and I can do without you So last is take a heed of me the threshing time falls be sure you gather in the rain and not the chaff that blows. Oh, once upon a time, when I was young and bonny, once I had a bonny lad, now I haven't any. This was actually written from, by a, a Scottish fiddler from Boston. Her name is Barbara McGowan. And uh, it's, it's a great little tune. It's like, um, I think she says a ravelin is a tangled thread. So. <laughs> and then uh, we'll go into an Irish tune called the Porthole of the Kelp. And then after that, we'll do another Irish tune called the Banshee. Do you know what the Banshee is? 
you all do. Okay, we don't need to talk about it anymore then. <laughs> okay. So not too slow, not too fast. right but it's just such a happy lovely little tune so maybe the banshee isn't so bad after all all right mm. now so we're kind of doing a little mix of like you know Scottish tunes and Irish tunes and Irish songs and Scottish songs and, um, and some you may know and some you may not know 
This might not be one that you know. I doubt it, but um, we'll see what happens. This is a song. Now, the, the thing about this song is that it's a, a really old, traditional Scottish song. And I, um, God, I forgot my research. I did my research at one point. I want to say this goes back to the 1600s, and I think they even know who wrote it. I'm going to embarrass myself if I try to guess and remember. But the song's called The Braves of Balquinner. Now, um, this song you probably don't know, but later on they wrote another song or, or back in the 50s, 1957, I believe, there was a song written called um, Wild Mountain Time. I'm not going to do Wild Mountain Time right now. <laughs> I'm going to do its predecessor, which uh, has a whole lot of Wild Mountain Time in it, or I should say Wild Mountain Time's a whole lot of Braves of Belquitter in it. And um, it's a different melody, but there are definitely lyrics that were um, borrowed would be the, the, the gentle way of calling it. <laughs> Stolen would be uh, the real way of describing it. Let me see here. Let me just throw it. But the original uh, uh, is really pretty. You can go find versions of this. A web search, a YouTube search will, will yield some good results, including one of my own. So let's see if I can do this. It's a really pretty tune, same kind of vibe uh, as, um, as Wild Mountain Time, sort of uh, a, a love song from uh, probably a man in a kilt to his, his dearie, as they say. Right? Let us go, last go to the graves of Belquitter, where the blueberries grow among the bonny highland heather, where the deer and the rain lightly bounding together, sport the long summer day on the graves of Belquitter. I will build the bower by yon pure crystal fountain and upon it I shall pile all the flowers of the mountain I will range through the wild and the deep lands so dreary and return with the spoils to the bower of my dearie let us go lassie go to the braes of Belquither where the blueberries grow among the bonny highland heather where the rude wintry wind idly raves round our dwelling and the roar of the wind on the night breeze is swelling and so merrily we sing as the storm rattles o'er us while the deer she ring with light little Let us go, lassie, go to the braes of Belquither, where the blueberries grow among the hot healing heather. Now the summer's in prime, with the flowers richly blooming, and the wild mountain thyme, and the moorlands perfuming to our dear native scenes. Let us journey together where glad innocence reigns among the braes of Belquitter. Let us go, lassie, go to the braes of Belquitter, where the blueberries grow among the bonny highland heather, where the deer and the rain lightly bounding together for the long summer day on the braes of Belquither. We haven't done that one in a while. <laughs> I, know, but... I was just
just waiting for you to say, take it again. And I was like, now? Now? <laughs> <laughs> Oh God, the things that you know go through your head when you're trying to remember everything you're supposed to remember. Um, lovely. So now we're going to do uh, a little jig, an Irish jig. It's called Born for Sport. And uh, I don't know quite what that means, but... Um, and then we'll go into a, a good old Irish reel called The Star of Munster. I'm going to take my green scarf off because I'm getting a little warm. It is a little warm. I'm gonna roll up one sleeve. <laughs> I did a show, we did a show in Connecticut last night and um, it was really warm on stage and I, I know this is an unusual look to walk around with one sleeve rolled up, but for a guitar player it makes a lot of sense. I think it, um, when you're, I actually, pr I don't know if I've been, the button on my shirt has not been clicking on the top of my guitar, has it? <laughs> it suddenly became very self-conscious. All right. All right, born for that. sport. Bonnie. All right, now now that our um, undressing has occurred, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, okay, we'll try doing go. this thing here. All right. I would. Um, I was thinking about this time, and I was in. I was in Ireland, and I was in Donegal. And anybody here ever been to Donegal? Okay, a couple of people. Yeah, it's a beautiful county. It's in the northwest of the country, and um, I was there in the winter, and there weren't many tourists around. And I wandered into this little pub in a little village um, called Guidor, and that's where the. I don't know if you know the band Alton. Um, some of you might know Alton. This is, they're all from that area, from Gwador, Donegal. So I wandered into a wee pub, and uh, it was in the afternoon on a Sunday, and all the locals were in there. Like I said, there weren't many uh, uh, 
uh, tourists around. So I went up to the bar and I sat down and ordered myself a drink and I'm sitting there and after a little while, the man in the corner shouts out, Turty tree. Now that means 33, <laughs> just so you know. He says, Turty tree. And the whole place erupted in laughter like they were just dying with the laughter, you know? And I said, well, that's very strange, but we'll just, just figure that it's just some weird thing. And went back to my drink and uh, another 15 minutes later, this woman in the corner shouts out, 55. <laughs> and once again, the whole place breaks out in laughter. Everybody's laughing. I'm the only one that's like, God, what's going on here? So I said to the bartender, I said, you know, what's with this uh, shouting out a number and everybody laughing? And he says, well, we're a very close community here. You know, we've known each other for many years. And so as, as a way to save a bit of time, we've just numbered our jokes. <laughs> so I said, well, do you think I could try it? You know, I just was like, what the heck? I could throw out a number and just, you know. He's like, sure, go on, go on. And so I uh, got up my courage and I didn't know what was gonna happen and I just went, 89! And like the most unbelievable laughter erupted from the, the people were rolling on the floor, wetting themselves, they were laughing so hard, it was like epic. And I just looked, I just looked at the bartender and I said, oh my gosh, I said, what was that all about? He says, well, We've never heard that joke before. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you have to think about that for a minute, that last little part, right? <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about that diversion, Max. <laughs> it's a welcome diversion. I'm gonna do a, a Doogie McLean song um, that I kind of co-wrote with him, although he has no idea that I co-wrote this with him. <laughs> Um, Doogie's a wonderful songwriter and musician from Scotland, and uh, he wrote a song that I'm going to do that's called Caledonia, and some of you may have heard of it. It's, it's a really beautiful melody. And um, I, I just, uh, as an exercise, COVID-19 brought us a, a lot of um, isolation and chances to work on our art, and I sat down and I said, you know, I, I wanted to write, for me, a lyric that would, uh, was very personal to me, and I wanted to put it to his melody, so I did it. So I wrote a lyric that he doesn't know about uh, to his song, Caledonia. And um, I don't know if he's ever gonna hear it, and if he does, I, I hope he doesn't beat me up. But I wrote mine was about um, being on the road as a musician. And I actually kind of tried to imagine myself in his shoes because he's an international touring artist, he's been all over the place, he'll come over to the United States from his, his home, Scotland, and he'll be literally, you know, a, you know, a continent, a, an ocean away from home, so for me it was a song about being far away from home, and, and kind of the, the nature of the song, it's about, uh, Caledonia is another word for Scotland, or a, a way of calling Scotland, so I made it more personal for me the way I wanted to tell this story, so uh, this is what I did with Caledonia, and with all of the uh, credit to Doogie. Okay, we'll start off. Here we go. Oh, you go on yourself. All right, so I'll <laughs> I was going to have her start with me. She'll, she'll, she'll come in. You'll hear it. Another day spent on the road, and though I smile and go through the motions, well, I am feeling empty and alone so far away today. The thought of you makes me realize that my mind has strayed across the ocean. And every time I close my eyes, I just drift away. Oh, let me tell you that I love you and I think about you all the time. Caledonia, you're calling me, and now I'm going home. And if I should become a stranger, know that it would make me more than sad. 
Caledonia, you're everything I've ever had. Through the years I have traveled far With no regrets for the dream I've followed And I have stories and I have scars I earned along the way At season's end, the summer gone The autumn wind makes me feel so hollow I know that I must be moving on Afraid I cannot stay Oh, let me tell you that I love you And I think about you all the time Caledonia, you're calling me And now I'm going home And if I should become a stranger Know that it would make me more than sad Caledonia, you're everything I've ever had Now I'm sitting here before the fire This empty room fills me with sorrow The hour is late and I am tired So much I need to do But suddenly it seems so clear And I know what I will do tomorrow I'll pack my things, I'm leaving here And heading home to you Oh, let me tell you that I love you And I think about you all the time Caledonia, you're calling me And now I'm going home And if I should become a stranger Know that it would make me more than sad Caledonia, you're everything I've ever had sit in the stool anymore. <laughs> so I'm going to stand up because it just feels a little bit more natural to me. All right. Now, you know what? I'm not even going to introduce the next set. We're just going to play it. It's upbeat, though, so you'll be happy about that. Are you ready? Yep. One, two, three. <laughs> Thank you. 
favorites to play. That was um, that last tune was uh, a tune called. Uh, was that tune called? <laughs> Mutt's favorite. Yeah, Mutt's favorite. How come I can't remember that? It's like, geez, you know, like when you know something for years and years, and then one day you're just like. Mm. That was written by uh, a great fiddler named Jerry Holland, who's um, unfortunately um, not with us anymore, but he wrote hundreds of fabulous tunes, and that was one of, one of his tunes. Um, now, what are we doing next, Max? We're going to do this one. What's this one? Uh, the New Re Highwayman. Okay, can I just get a drink of water? Yes. <laughs> so the New Re Highwayman, uh, I actually heard the Solas version of this uh, a while back. That's kind of how I got introduced to a band called Solas. And I heard this version from them. But it's actually it's an older song. It's a traditional tune. It's a song, I should say. And it's, um, uh, it's about a guy who bites off more than he can chew financially, gets married to a woman with very fine tastes, more than he can afford. So he um, basically goes and starts robbing people on the highway. <laughs> And it, that's the song. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what the moral content of our show, <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, what's cool about it? I, what I think is kind of cool. I'll, I'll, uh, I'm gonna brag about my fiddler here. Is that uh, we were oh, playing? Uh, <laughs> we were playing with it, and she, we kind of co-wrote this part. That's uh, an instrumental break that uh, that we kind of co-wrote, and it's no one else does it. So when you hear this today. Nobody else does this version. It's, it's gratitude. We've, we've originalized it, so it's a, so let's see if we can do it here. Right, let's see if we can. Do you want me to play at the beginning? Yeah. I'll give you a little. I'll give you a vamp, and then you jump in. Okay. Okay. We always kind of make. We do that. We do a session uh, all the time over at Dennis uh, at the Red Nun on Saturdays. Kind of there a bunch, five to seven. If you feel free, come by, have a drink. <laughs> Uh, we kind of have been working on some of this material uh, there, so uh, also we can do it for you. So all right, this is a... A flashy fruit, oh let me have 
six highwaymen for to carry me and give them broadswords and liberty and give them broadswords and liberty six pretty maidens to hear my call and give them ribbons and gardens all and when I'm gone I'll they'll speak the truth he was a wild and a wicked youth he was a wild and a wicked youth I guess the highwayman was a, more of a rob from the rich, give to the poor kind of kind of thing, so you yeah. could glorify it. And um, you know, anyway. So let me ask you something. I don't know. I'm gonna go off script. <laughs> oh no! Okay, what you got? I was thinking that we kind of need like a sing-along whiskey song. Oh, we could do one. Really <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> you caught me off guard. I left my book back there. Can you give me a second? I can go get, go it. get it. I'll go get it. Are you gonna keep them entertained? I'm gonna because I'm gonna tell them another story. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> tell them a story. I see Augie back there. Hiya, Augie. Oh. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Augie watched our little our little Tuesday night program that we did on Zoom for about a year, and uh, he learned a lot of whiskey songs. <laughs> Didn't you, Augie? <laughs> yeah, I did. I know. So anyway, my dad, um, my dad's from Ireland, and uh, he's just come back onto the Cape here today, but um, couldn't make it because they were still driving when the concert was going on, so. But, um, you know, he likes a bit of whiskey himself, and uh, one time he was in Ireland, and uh, he loves the pachin. Do you know what the pachin is? It's like, a, like an Irish kind of, Kind of a whiskey thing that you just make from whatever you have, mostly potatoes. You know, they'll have a little still and they make these pachin and it's very, very strong and it's actually, it's not really legal. But you can usually, there's usually a pachin maker in every town and if you know somebody, you can get a bottle of it. So he, anyway, secured himself a bottle of pachin and he was uh, coming back to the States. It's lovely to make a hot toddy with it, you know. And usually they'll just put it in like a, you know, like a lemonade glass bottle, you know, so it's, so he's coming through customs in the airport and uh, the guy says, open your bag. And he's like, oh no. So he opens up the bag and the customs guy, he finds the, the bottle and he says, what's this? And my father says, oh sir, he says, that's holy water from the <laughs> I'm bringing it back to my sick friend. <laughs> and the fellow says, well, let me just check and see. So he opens up the bottle, and he sticks his finger in, and he goes, that's not holy water. And my father says, oh, but Jesus, it's another miracle. <laughs> You want to that one? Yeah. All right. She just picked the first whiskey one she saw. Um. <laughs> <laughs> because they all know this one. They need something that they know. Absolutely. I, well, you think they know this one? Do they? Uh, they know whiskey in the jar, don't whiskey, you? Do you guys know whiskey in the jar? I've never had whiskey in a jar. I, I feel like uh, it's a little new for me, but. <laughs> Augie, this is for you. <laughs> Yeah, this is a um, okay. uh, personal favorite here. And uh, St. Patty's Day was just a few days ago. We got 362 days left, I think, until the next one. But who's counting? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Side, side, side. I, I don't know if you should do this one. I don't remember how it goes. Side, it starts G, right? Yeah. Okay, good. I'll make sure I have the right key. Don't worry. Everybody's, you're just going to 
be forgiving, right? You, We're going to yeah, do it. Absolutely. See? I'm in an art See museum. I mean? Look at them. They're great. Absolutely. It's an art museum whiskey song. Here we go. As I was going over. No, that's wrong. As I, as I was going over. Okay, good. Uh, let's do that key. That's what's wrong with me. I have the wrong key. All right, got to put it in the right key. So here, uh, this is whiskey in the jar. As I was going over the far famed Kerry Mountains, I met the Falcon Farrell and his money he was counting. I first produced my pistol and then produced my saber, saying, Stand and deliver, for I am the bold deceiver. Blush for rain and I unfold out of your And she swore that she never would see me But the devil take the women for they never can be easy But surrender and die But for the daddy old, but for the daddy old There's a street in the shop Went up to my chamber, all for to take a slumber I dreamt of gold and jewels and for sure it was no wonder Jenny took my charges and filled them up with water and sent the Captain Farrell to be ready for the slaughter. tunes for you. See, we just totally lost track of time. We were just having so much fun. So I want to thank um, uh, 
Joyce and, and all of the board um, of the Music and More series, and uh, it's so nice to be able to come to a beautiful space like this and to play for an audience like you who is listening, um, really just sitting and listening, and, and it's lovely. I mean, I have to say, when you come out to St. Patrick's Day, you know, sometimes it's, um, you know, did you ever see that, that part in the movie The Blues Brothers where they have to play behind the chicken wire? Yeah. So this is delightful. Um, we thank the museum for hosting this series. Hope you come out and see Jen Jackson next week. She's a friend of mine for a long time now, and she's a fabulous uh, singer, songwriter, guitarist. Um, now, is there anything else we're forgetting? Can't remember. I don't think so. OK, so thank you again for being here, and uh, we've really enjoyed ourselves. OK, this is a tune called Oh, let's not even say it. I'll tell you later. Okay, you ready? Yeah. I'm going to stand up for this one because it's that kind of a tune, you know? Okay. Tis.
doing? We have some CDs up here if you're interested. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming out. Ah, thank you. Also, thanks to Frank, our sound fellow here, who did all this great work on the sound, making us sound good. Big hand for Frank. And his, I guess his son does the Zoom. All right. Have a great day.